weeks, we've been talking about optimization, trying to find out different ways to uh, take a query and come up with the best way to evaluate it. Uh, today, we're going to be uh, continuing that thread and talking about how we can actually apply indexes to the uh, task at hand. I will also be exploring later on, I'm committing, uh, various ways of exploring how to evaluate a join. Before we get to that though, a uh, quick, uh, quick overview of uh, chapter one. Uh, the vast majority of the class has uh, actually surprisingly managed to meet the reference implementation by quite a bit. Uh, so here's the uh, current leaderboards for TPCH3. Thank you. 
through this step by step. What's the first step in in a rewrite? Right here. I, I'm, a, I'm a dumb computer right here. I, I, 
All I can do is follow the basic rules that have been proven to me that are correct. You've proven that this is correct. Now prove to me, well, okay, actually, let's, uh, we should know where we're going. So uh, read this out to me. Join up. Join up. So because we can flip uh, this condition applies only to S attributes, we can push this in there. And then what's left that? Okay, so selection of this plus cross product gives us a join over that condition. Great. So we're here. That's something much, much simpler. Um, Eyeballing it, how, what would the time complexity of the original uh, expression be? If we were doing the cross product, how much would this cross product? So when you're evaluating this, you only have to do a fragment of the tuples. When you're evaluating this portion, you're still looking at the entire set of tuples. Okay, good. So we're, we 
talked about indexes uh, over the last couple of days, the last couple of classes. How might we be able to use an index uh, to answer this query more efficiently?
you describe to me an algorithm that would uh, allow us to, to do that? Remember, I'm a, I'm a dumb computer right here. I, I can only do precisely what you tell me to. And I don't know, uh, how, how do I get to 90? So you can take, you can find a two bucket, you know, because of your hashing function, that your data is stored into two separate buckets.
So um, the general answer and uh, the, the general comment I'm going to give here, this is in fact a good way to do your partitioning in certain cases, um, particularly when the data that you're trying to, um, to store with uh, the functions uh, This te the technique that you're describing is, is actually pre pretty frequently used in distributed settings because it allows you to figure out which partition something goes to without explicitly having, uh, without having a query. If I know that something go falls in a range 80 to 90, I know that it goes to this bucket. Wherever that bucket is located, I know that it goes to this particular bucket. Um, but if it falls in, Basically, for whatever value it is, it, I, I know precisely which bucket it falls in. Um, for on-disk stuff, where there is benefit in being able to sequentially scan data. So uh, let me put it this way. Uh, the algorithm that was described here, where I find the rightmost bucket and then just scan over all of the, uh, the entries up to that point, could I use that in, uh, in this kind of bucketing I see. So, yeah, effectively, there are some situations where you'd want to, to use buckets. Um, there are some situations where having um, where you'd want to organize your buckets by a hash function. There are some situations where you would actually want to keep your buckets in sorted order. And if keeping your buckets in sorted order, well, how do you organize the buckets themselves? You can have your... I guess the, the, the point here is that even within partitioning, there's uh, partitioning schemes, uh, you can still consider uh, organizational schemes for each partition as well. I have a big data set. I could either organize the entire data set as one big thing, or I could partition it, but then how do I store the, the individual partitions? Um, I could sort those, I could, um, you could do all sorts of things on the, the individual partitions as well. Does that address your question? Okay. Evaluate this um, this query that might be potentially more efficient. Yes. Any indexes on both of the columns? Create indexes on what do you mean by both of the columns? Create an index on name and grade. Yeah. Okay. Um, Okay, so we have an index on, that's a great idea. We have an index on this, we have an index on this. Um, so now I can run this selection query, I can only get the students named Alice. I can run this query, I can get only the uh, grades that are between uh, 85 and 100. Is that necessarily going to be the most efficient thing that I could do? So let's say I have a million students. That's a lot. Actually, that's kind of scary. Um, but let's say I have a million students. Let's say one of them is named Alice. Is this the best thing that I could possibly do? Okay, so there's a specific set of integers that you could use. 
again until you reach the end. Um, so let's, again, uh, let's say I, I have um, a million students. One of them is named Alice. How many couples am I going to have here? What about here? Let's say that um, this, between these two, uh, there's a reduction factor. Uh, I get 10% uh, of the tuples that come in. How many tuples am I getting here? Yeah, let's take a quick two minutes, uh, two minute break. Uh, talk to your uh, your immediate neighbors and uh, try and come up with a potentially more efficient way of running this query. <laughs>
recommend for that? Uh, let's try and come up with a plan for that. Um, describe to me this plan. you're going to implement a select, you're going to essentially run a new query of some sort. Now, how is, how is this query implemented right now? Value. 
then again, I'm assuming that I have some sort of index structure, and I'm leaving that a little abstract. Okay. Now, let me get back to an assumption that you make here, that the, um, we're assuming that the left-hand side has precisely one row in it. What if there were two students named Dallas? Could we use something similar? Adam. So that, that is a very good observation. Um, I want to actually come back to that in a little bit because while it's this may not necessarily be um, this may not necessarily be sort of optimal. Uh, uh, you're doing you are doing a hundred lookups. Uh, this may still end up being cheaper than some other options than than any of the other options you have. So. Um, yeah, I, I want to actually come back to this in a little bit. So, uh, any other questions at this point? Um, okay, so the uh, so this is essentially it. It works kind of like uh, a nested loop joint. I am for every record on one hand side, uh, one hand of my input, I am doing a loop over that, and then every. Uh, for every record that I get on the left-hand side, I'm doing an index lookup on the right-hand side to, to sort of pre-filter uh, the, the attributes that I'm, I'm looking for. Uh, so how would, how would this query look if I were using an index nested loop joint? So would I be, would I be able to run the selection predicate first. Back that up a little bit. If I'm, 
if I'm doing an index lookup on the right hand side relation, I'm essentially assuming that I have an index built on the right hand side relation. That kind of gets me to the main thing that I wanted to talk about today, or one of the main things that I wanted to talk about today, which is what, what indexes do we end up wanting to 